So I've been visiting with a therapist over the last semester and trying to dissect the different things going on, understand my tendency toward the negative things I feel, and I found part of the reason is, is that I'm fairly conscientious, which leads to demanding more of myself than I can reasonably do. Recently, my therapist wrote on a piece of paper what he titled an emotional immune system and helped fill out and acknowledge the empty parts, then examine how to fill them. For me, two areas he left to be determined were affirmation and acceptance. Sengatsu no Lion, the once again unsung hero of anime in its respective seasons, is just as impactful, heart-wrenching, and hopeful in season two, but there seems to be a strong narrative focus in the first half especially. Who are we to demand from anyone? Is there a right we have to use others to fill the holes in ourselves? Can they even fix them, or is it an ever-giving process? If they give to us, are we capable of also giving to them? Can mutual benefit, a positive sum game, be achieved? Not to prevent bad results, but to foster good ones. To correct for a want to be needed. Sengatsu no Lion actually has a very heavy focus and one of the most emotionally impacting arcs from its series centering around Hinata and her bullying situation at school. For the uninitiated, Hinata is a girl in middle school and is dealing with the more negative side of the collectivist-centered Japanese society. She becomes a punching bag to a few students, with the rest too afraid to defend her in fear that they will be picked on as well. Not to say that this happened randomly though, Hinata is only the present bullied person due to the fact that she was the only one with the guts to stand up to the bullies who were bullying someone else in the first place, and in opposition to what cliché story points would tell us, she doesn't magically succeed or get rewarded for doing this courageous, just, and moral act, but instead starts surviving in a living hell, as friends distance themselves from her and she feels more and more alone. With exception to, of course, one schoolmate, which is not even in her class, as well as her family and the main character, Rei. The irritation builds as Rei and Hinata's older sister, Akari, talk about how they desperately want to help her, but they know that the intervention could only lead to worse bullying, which, for any person who's grown up in the East or the West, knows that parental intervention on bullying almost always leads to worse. This sort of situation leads Akari feeling guilty and helpless, feeling like her promise to her since-past mother to protect Hinata is a failed one, that she is not only letting Hinata down, but her mom as well. Rei, on the other hand, feels personally rescued by Hinata. Whenever he was in his deepest, darkest moments, Hinata and the Kawamoto sisters in general came out and really helped him get out of that hole and therefore he feels indebted to her to make a difference, but knows just what the effects of bullying can really be. This season has honestly made me feel sick at times, echoing some long-heard, shallow, emotionless statements of childhood cruelty. But Ray has to suppress those memories, those hard feelings, and those anxieties. He puts them down in his shogi matches. One of the people he faces gets nearly an entire episode to himself to ease the intensity of the season that has followed thus far. But this is a far from filler episode. It shows a story almost entirely disconnected from the plot displaying this opponent and his hobby, how he raises birds, how he feeds and takes care of them, but whenever he lets the bird out that he loves dearly, it doesn't come back. This destroys him. This is it. This is the thematic core of the season so far. Not topics that are elsewhere covered often, like depression, bullying, and a coming of age, although those are most certainly important and covered descriptively here as well. This is taking those topics and intertwining them with the base longing, the appeal to be loved and love others. It hinges on the profound writings of John Doan when he wrote, No man is an island entire of itself. I am very introverted. I love being alone. If I'm invited to a gathering where there is a large group of people, I will almost always find reasons not to go. This past month, I have spent anywhere between 3 to 12, yes 12, full hours writing kanji and listening to audiobooks or anime in the background, working to improve myself. Because achievement, the journey itself, brings great comfort 
and more so distraction from the fact that I live so far away from my family and have so few, if any, friends near me who know me entirely. It's entirely lonely. I love it, but at the end of the day, when I feel the achievement and I get to the top of the mountain or am standing on the bridge, when I look around and I don't see any faces smiling at me, I only am entirely self-reliant and sustained by my own ideal of achievement. This is what I wanted, right? To pursue what I love and hopefully find others around the way? Well, I feel like I just keep walking and I'm not finding anybody. I'm halfway through college and I'm going overseas after graduation. I don't know anyone. My closest of relationships I don't feel like I'm on the same page with. My friends are getting jobs and separating. Their relationships are moving to engagements and marriages, and I still feel like, despite all my effort to improve and pursue what makes me happy, that it doesn't feel worth it without people beside me. But it's also not worth it to be beside people and not pursue this. It's... I know what it is. I know what I'm missing. The same thing Akari and Rei are. The same thing most of the characters in Sengatsu no Lion are. A want to be needed. Because I can't always just rely on myself. And I want others to rely on me too. I, I want to care about people, truly and deeply. And I just don't know where to find them. All I can think is to shake the feeling and to keep my head up until they appear. Don't lose hope that they will. They did for Ray, after all. Wow, okay, so for all of my old subscribers and all the people who have found me, um, who've been kind of wondering if I was dead <laughs> or waiting for a video, uh, I feel like it's uh, somewhat appropriate to explain myself a little bit. I've gotten extremely busy with school, blah, 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 blah. You get that. You know where I'm going with that. I have worked on some videos, and I've scrapped a lot. But I've, I've mainly just, I mean, I guess I've been lazy. I don't know. Um, but I thought that uh, when I was watching, because I'm still keeping up with the anime and everything, uh, I thought when I was watching Sengatsu no Lion, um, the sort of impact, the emotional feeling that it brought me back to, which was the emotional catalyst that started this YouTube channel. And so I sort of thought it was appropriate to bookend my uh, sophomore year, starting with a Sengatsu no Lion video and ending with a Sengatsu no Lion video. And uh, moving into summer, I'm really hoping to continue to post videos. I hope that you'll come along. I hope that you'll uh, enjoy it. Feel free to you know, suggest topics to me. I can't guarantee I'll do them, especially if they're of the emotional variety, <laughs> because uh, I, that needs to be authentic. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you so much to all of my old subscribers who still watched this video after months. And thank you so much to the almost five times the subscribers that I had last time I posted a video um, for finding and subscribing, despite the fact that my channel basically looked dead. <laughs> well, I hope that you all got something or enjoyed some part of this, and I hope to see you soon.